Well, I just watched the story of the Elk Malji Mounds in this area. And now I'm going to take a walk and I'm going to go view some of the mounds. I took some pictures and video of the museum. Uh, but I'm just going to enjoy the day. It's got a little warmer. The sun is out. And uh, just visit places from the past. The Mississippians arrived after a 700-year journey southeast from the Mississippi Valley. They were skilled farmers of corn, squash, beans, pumpkin, and tobacco, and that enabled them to be able to settle down. They built a compact town of fat tots on a bluff overlooking the Okmulgee River. Their population grew to over a thousand, so their complex expanded to include mounds, earth lodges, and burial sites. The level ground near the river, they built up earth mounds for public Ceremonies. The temple mounds were not built to full height all at once, but were raised over the years, the same as the funeral mound, which was built in stages. The Earth Lodge, central to Mississippian life, may have been used as a seasonal temple or a year-round council house. They played competitive field games. Chunky stones and Mississippian shell carvings that showed elaborately dressed players preparing to toss discs like stones were found by archaeologists. Games improved their hunting and warrior skills, including speed and accuracy. They also played stickball, the ancestor to the game of lacrosse. Making deadly arrow points requires good stone, good tools, made of stone, bone and antler, and personal skill. Flint knappers had to strike just the right spots to make the sharp point they wanted. Excavators found thousands of projectile points during the digs. Arrow points could sometimes be reused if the arrow could be found after launching it. your head. This is inside the mound that they excavated. Is this how they would have made it? This was the cornfield mound. They found charred corn cobs from like 900 to 1200 BC, I think it was. So this one had trenches through it and different things. So people at Okmalji cooked many meals over open fires. They enjoyed roasts and stews. They boiled deer, squirrel, turkey, or fish. They ate together from family-sized bowls. In place of butter, sugar, and condiments, they did use salt. They used hickory oil, ground chestnuts, maple sap, dairy, and persimmon paste. They used many plants in their food, squashes, pumpkins, berries, beans. They grew corn, and they, after drying the kernels, they ground their own cornmeal. You can still see the earth lodge, and that earth lodge was about... Um, that reconstruction was from about like what it would look like a thousand years ago inside. These holes along here are where posts would have been. So that there was the remnants of the trading post and I guess the trench was from the Civil War and then there was a stockade around it. I am on top of the largest mound. Wow, it is huge. I had to climb up a million steps. No, that's an exaggeration. But man, I had to rest once. You can see there's another mound over there. 
guess you can drive to most of these. And right over there is the city of Macon. The Great Temple Mount of Okmulgee rose nine stories above a person's head. And it also had thatch structures built on top of it. Okmulgee mounds and plazas were once important landmarks, like medieval cathedrals or modern skyscrapers. And down there you can see a smaller mound, and that's called the Lesser Temple Mound. And then it was the trading post beyond that. At this point I'm getting a little confused about what mound is what mound. I guess I was right. I just had missed this mound. This is the funeral mound. Over a hundred burials were found here and some with high social status because they had copper and shell ornaments, but most had no offerings. And in the 1870s, a railway cut removed a large portion of the funeral mound. the Dunlop Mound. It's very small now. It was named after the family who owned a plantation here in 1856. And the house, chicken house and a garden were close to the mound. It was severely damaged due to plowing and orchard planting. It was originally six feet high, 100 feet wide, and when the mound was excavated they found evidence that a rectangular structure stood on top of it at one time. So this was the site of the Battle of Walnut Creek. My nature collection. That's a big pine cone to me. The people I was camping beside last night, they found one that was like pretty well as big as a basketball. It was huge, but uh, no, that's the biggest one I found so far. This is my second stop today. I'm at Robbins Air Force Base to visit the Museum of Aviation. The Museum of Aviation in Macon is the second largest Air Force Museum in the country of the U.S. It is the fourth most visited Department of Defense Museum. It has 350,000 annual visitors and there's 30,000 participants in education programs and it has over 500 annual events. I like these jackets. Mm. Oh, these jackets are awesome. Another one down there.
there I go hugging strangers again. I was chatting with a lady who volunteers at this museum and uh, she ended up giving me a Museum of Aviation book, which you usually have to buy, but she gave me a copy of it. And I just had to give her a hug. We talked for quite a bit. Vietnam War room or hangar. in this plan. Mm. Oh, that's their ambulances. Double deckers. Bunk beds. It's one we just looked inside. gonna shoot us. <laughs> wow. Lots of equipment. of bombs. Pilot food. This is the bobcat.
This was used during the Vietnam War. This is a big one. This is the caribou. Wrinkles way out there. This was used as a bomber in the Korean War. All I can say, it's been an absolute great day for me. I love exploring history. I loved going to the Indian Mounds and now the Aviation Museum. Um, I make these videos, videos really for myself, for memories, because I got tired of just having photos. So sometimes I put more in than what you, maybe you want to see, but. I may want to watch them. So anyway, I think I'm going to head off and this might be the end of my video. We'll see. Well, I'm out of Walmart for the night. I wanted to drive further, but I'm just too tired out from today. Anyway, I'm going to end this video here and tomorrow's another day and another adventure. You have a great day and take care. Subscribe. Follow me.